Okay, so in this video, we're going to create, um, we're going to set up pretty much how our project should be more or less uh, set up here. So we're going to do a master page. Um, we're going to do a site map, which is right here. And we're also going to incorporate um, user logins. All right, so if I go to any of the sections of my website, it's going to ask me here to log in. So let me log in here. And let's see. Alright, so then now I can view the contents inside my web my website because I'm I'm a logged in user. I can also insert records because I'm an admin now that I logged in with those credentials and then here on the bottom you see that it shows my username and it gives me the ability to log out right? and then when I log out then it tells me to log back in okay so let me show you how to set all this up it's going to take a little bit um, but if you just stick through the video um, you should be fine so let's get started Okay, so for this project, I'm going to call it Project Setup Video. And actually, I'm not creating a project, I'm creating a new website, so don't get confused and create a project accidentally. Uh, make sure it's empty website, make sure it's Visual Basic. Hit OK. Uh, hit OK here. Okay, so first thing, let's create the master page. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to add master page. Uh, you can leave the default name. Hit OK. Okay, so here's our master page. Uh, our I'm going to delete this div here and this one here and inside our web form we're going to have a header uh, we're going to have what else I'm going to tab this in a bit we're going to have navigation, so nav. We're going to have a section. And then at the end here, we're going to have a footer. Now this content placeholder, this is where the content from each of the different web pages is going to go inside the mass um, that's actually uh, okay let me rephrase that the content placeholder is where the content of each web page is going to be held or contained this other stuff here is going to be replicated on the master page so the thing that we want that's going to change based on whatever web pages we create will be in the section All right so I'm going to cut the content placeholder and then I'm going to make a little bit of room here in the section and I'm going to paste that content placeholder there right so the section is where it, we're going to hold our information here so if we look back to our web page here I'm going to log in again Right, the section is what changes based on whatever we're doing. Right, so if we're in the movies page here, movies dot default. Then this part changes. This is the content placeholder. All this other stuff, the header, the nav, the footer, all that is on the master page. Right, so all this other stuff here, insert this as well. 
all that is the what's in the content placeholder okay so I think that makes a little bit more sense now all right so then the next thing we need for the master page is going to be our CSS we can go back here um, I'm going to change this out to style sheet dot CSS right and here's our style sheet this is just a general one right for your project you know you want to have your own style you want your page to be different from anyone else's so then I'm going to right click here I'm going to add add a new style sheet leave the default name I'm going to get rid of all this and I'm going to paste what I just copied right, so it should look like that I'm going to right click here I'm going to save it and then after the title I'm going to put the style sheet there. Okay. Now if we go to design view, we should see our style sheet more or less. Yeah, this is our this is how our website looks. See there's a content placeholder here. I would also recommend at least while you're setting this up, uh, let's put some labels inside each of our main portions of our site. So here I'll do H1, we'll do header, here we'll do uh, H3, and then navigation, uh, this one I guess we don't need to label it, and then here the footer, H3 footer. That way we know where we're at when we look at it in design mode. Right? So now we have a header, we have navigation, and we have a footer. Okay. So now that we have our master page pretty much set up, uh, we can go ahead and create the rest of our pages now. So then I'm going to get the Solution Explorer. I'm going to put it here. And then I'm going to create everything else that we need. So we're going to need several folders. So I'll go ahead and right click Add a New Folder. And we're going to do the Admin folder. Right, this is where our pages where we edit. Let me go back here see admin folders where we add records right and then we have another folder called books uh, but we can't add anything here right I just press insert and it takes me to admin I go to movies I have a movies folder I press insert that takes me to the admin folder right that admin folder is only for uh, admins that are logged in if you're not an admin then you can't insert any records So we have that. Now we need to create another folder. Add new folder. We're going to call this one um, books. And then I'm going to add another folder. We're going to call this uh, movies. Okay, so now let's add the web pages that we need inside our folders. So for admin, we'll need web form with master. Uh, this one we're going to call add book, or maybe add books. It sounds better. Hit OK. We only have one master page, so 
but we'll use that one. Then we're going to add another web form with master. We're going to do add movies dot aspx and okay okay there and then here for books we'll add just a default uh, web form with master leave it as default same master page and then for movies we will add web form with master default Okay, so we have that. Uh, the other folder we're going to need is if we go back here to our page, I'm going to log out. I'm going to hit books. And then you notice that when I try to get to this page, it takes me to the security folder. And then inside the security folder, I have a login. Right? And then if I hit create account, then it takes me to another page on in the security folder called user. And then I can create new accounts here. All right, so that means I need a security folder and I need two pages in there. So let's do that as well. Okay, so now that we have that set up, then I'm going to right click here, add new folder we'll call this security security and then I'm gonna add web form with master and I'm gonna do a login hit OK same master page and then I'm gonna do another one add new item oh, I'm sorry uh, right click add web form with master and uh, we could either call it user or we could call it something a little bit more um, that actually defines what it is a little bit better well we could do create account it's the create account page hit OK say master right so your website now should look like this right you have your admin folder books movies and security admin has two um, pages to add records uh, books will display the records movies will display it uh, the movies and then security one to log in and one to create the account and if you want to be consistent here we can uh, rename and we can make sure that the word login is um, well I press something accidentally I'm gonna cancel that um, rename and I'm gonna make it capital okay so like that uh, this folder here I'm gonna auto hide okay so I think we're done with the setup put that back there Okay, so the next thing is we have nothing to display, we have no data, we have no information. So the next thing we need is our database. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to add, uh, add new item. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create I'm going to create first of all SQL Server Compact Local Database and here rather than using the default name uh, just go ahead and delete this where it says database and just remove the word base here so this is just going to be our data for our books for our movies we also need to create another database later on to hold our user accounts our logins our roles or rules um, so that I will show you how to do later on Right, so for right now, we're just going to create the database that's going to hold our information for the website. So then, um, 
to make sure it's SQL Server Compact 4.0 Local Database. If you're using a newer version of Visual Studio, then you may not have this option. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you're using for this class, make sure you're using Visual Studio 2012. So then go ahead and hit add. Uh, you get this folder. It just wants to create the app data folder. So just hit yes. Okay. So now we have our database. Now we go to the server, the server explorer. And then just uh, click here on the little arrow. And then now we need to create our tables. Let me show you this a little closer here. All right, so this is Server Explorer. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two tables. So let's create the books one first. So then that's going to be books. And then the first column is the ID book ID uh, here it's going to be an integer length 4 this will be the primary key and then here we're going to have the book title uh, we'll leave that as an nvar char length 100 and then for the books ID we need to make sure that this is the identity of the table and we need it to auto increment every time we insert a new record the ID should go up by one so that's what this setting here does that will values numeric values will be automatically inserted in each row of the column so then hit OK okay so now let's create the next table for movies so right click create table we'll call it movies here we need the movies ID data type is int primary key is yes uh, make sure it's the identity hit true then we have movies title and we'll leave all the default settings and then hit OK now we should have columns indexes for the movies uh, let's go ahead and insert records at least one record per table so that we have something to test with so I'm gonna right click here on books I'm gonna go to show table data and I have a record in here already uh, but if you don't have this record just type it in there type the outsiders the reason I have a record is because uh, I had to redo this portion of the video because I had a technical issue with my microphone so just make sure you have book ID 1, The Outsiders. Now let's go to the movies table we just created, show table data, and then here let's put a movie, I'll put the uh, Terminator, okay, and then we can go ahead and close that out, put the Solutions Explorer back where it belongs. okay and then also you notice I don't have any more of the tabs um, open I, I closed everything out because uh, as we were creating new pages uh, all those pages were showing up here in the tabs and it can get kind of um, overwhelming so I just closed everything out make sure I saved it and then uh, closed it okay so now the next thing I want to do is put the grid views in the default pages here so we'll start with books. So go to books default.aspx. And then we have our two content placeholders. Uh, one is for the head, one is for the actual content. So here in this area, I'm going to do h2 inside the content placeholder one. And here I'm going to put, um, this is the books page, so I'm going to put books so I don't get confused. And then I'm going to insert a grid view here. Once the grid view is in, go ahead and go to design. And then here under grid view 1, click the arrow. 
uh, choose data source. We're going to need a new data source. Uh, then we'll do SQL database. We'll leave the default name. Hit OK. Uh, connection string. We're going to use the. We're going to hit the drop down list and use the data.sdf. Hit next. We will save the connection string with the same name that's there. Next. This is the books page, so this looks pretty good here. Uh, so we'll leave that like that. Hit next. You can test your query, and your first book should come out. Right, so that way you know that you're on the right um, table. Hit finish. That uh, looks pretty good. Okay, so now what we need is a hyperlink. So I'm going to put my cursor after the SQL data source. I'm going to press enter here. I'm going to insert a hyperlink uh, button or link button right here. So drag that there. And then let's change some of the properties for the link button. So the main ones would be here text. We'll write insert a record. Let me capital. Okay. And then where is that supposed to take us? I guess here in the post back URL. Go ahead and click the ellipses. Let's go to admin and then we want the add books page. Now just make sure that this little squiggly line here, get rid of it. Press uh, just put a dot. Actually we want two dots. Right? So dot dot forward slash admin add books. Right? Because when we're on this page, we're in the books here. So we need to get out of the books folder and then go into the admins folder and then add books here. So we'll test it out. Make sure it's working. So I'll go ahead and put this back here. Uh, go ahead and hit Chrome run. Uh, if you get this debugging not enabled, uh, hit modify the web config file for debugging. Hit OK. And just wait for it to load. Okay, so we have we're in the books page here. Uh, we have one record. Now we hit insert a record. We should go back to the admins folder and then the add books page. So hit insert and see it does take us there. Right. So we're in the right place. And of course, once we create the form view. We should have one to, well, we'll have our navigation here on the side. So that'll help us get back to wherever we need to go. So it seems to be working good. So we can close that out. And then you can stop debugging. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to do it for the movies page. So now I'll go to movies default. So here under content 2, let's do an H3 and we'll type uh, movies, place another grid view right here. Now go to design, click here, choose data source, new data source, SQL database, hit OK. Connection string, we'll use the one we created. Hit next. Here for the tables, now we want the movies table. Hit next. Test the query, and the terminator appears. Hit finish. And then here at the bottom, I'm going to press enter there. And then I'm going to insert 
another link button like we did before and then let me get the properties here okay so then for text we'll put insert a record record and then the post back URL is going to be well we can click the ellipsis here uh, let's go to the move um, I'm sorry the admin folder now we're gonna go to the add movies page and then here the uh, ellipsis change it to two dots press enter and then I'll put the properties back for now and that should be it for the movies page now we can um, we can now do the add books and add movies page. Uh, but here, save this out, save this one out, and we can go ahead and close them so we don't get confused. Let's go to add books. Okay, so then here we're on the add books page, so I'm going to do an H3 here. Uh, I'm going to call it something like um, add a book and then I'm going to go to data I'm gonna do a form view put that there go to design now on form view let's um, do our data source SQL here connection string now this is to add a book so we'll select everything but just make sure you, now you go to advanced and generate insert update and delete statements hit OK hit next test your query finish and then by default it's in I, the item template right we want to have the insert item template as default so let's um, let's go ahead and change the default mode to insert right and then now we have our um, we have our text box and we can type the titles and insert multiple records uh, we don't need a back button because we're going to use our sitemap as the back button <clears throat> okay so that looks pretty good uh, go ahead and save that close it now let's do the same thing for movies so I double clicked on the add movies page here I'll put my properties here for now uh, let's do h3 and this will be add a movie now we want form view go to design and then we'll do new data source there hit ok connection string next here we want movies make sure don't forget to do advanced insert update and delete statements otherwise you can't use your uh, form view to insert anything without doing that uh, next test query okay so our movie shows up finish now let's modify some of these properties in form view so click the form view and then Uh, default mode we'll change that to uh, insert or sorry insert okay yeah that looks pretty good so save that now also we could create more forms right 
we could create an edit movies an edit books and then just change the default mode to either edit or read only to delete um, all right so you would add those here but it would be just the same thing that we're doing on the add books and add movies form except you just change the default mode out depending on what your pages want you want to do with it that's if you want separate pages for each operation and it's a good idea but here just so you get the idea of what's going on we'll just do add books and add movies okay so I'm gonna put my properties back now the next thing we need to do is create the sitemap to create the sitemap click here on the project setup video here with the little globe right click add and the sitemap is actually here in the context menu but in case it's not you can go to add new item and then you can find sitemap uh, somewhere here right here leave the default name click there hit add and here is our sitemap right. our sitemap is set up as nodes so the first node here is going to be our root node so our the root is would be where you first start when you get to the page right so we have a default oh actually we don't have a default page okay so I'm gonna minimize all this right so we have all these other web pages and each one has their folders but we don't have the actual default page or the home page for this entire site right we can fix that very easily just right click here we're gonna add new item and then I'm gonna add web form and make sure that select master page is selected or you could use this other way where you add and then web form with master right either option will work contents of folder yeah so then we'll use the same master page so here is the home page for our website so here in the content placeholder I'm gonna put a message like welcome to my website and then uh, h3 this is the home page okay so then save that out now go to design view right so this is the home page here this is what the user will see when they first arrive to your website so now that we have that I'm gonna close it out I'm gonna close out add movies we don't need that All right so now back to the web uh, the sitemap the root here is gonna be our home page which is just default dot ASPX and the title is home okay and then each of these sitemap nodes that are nested inside this here these are the pages that are within the site or the folders that are within the site All right so this next one is going to be dot forward slash books forward slash default dot ASPX and then the title here will be books and then the other page or the other section of our website is the movie section so that'll be movies forward slash default dot ASPX and then the title is movies right and let's say you want to add another section 
because your project will probably have more than two sections. Right, so we could do something like, um, let's say here, admin. And we could have something like, um, well, inside our admin folder, we have these two pages, so we could do something like add books. And then he changes this to add books. Copy this. Right, but we don't have. If we land on the ad books page, we have no way of getting to the ad movies page. So then you would do something like ad movies. All right. These aren't really necessary, but I just want to show you how to add uh, nodes to your site. Well, at least with these two, you should be fine. It just depends how you lay out your um, your navigation. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I want to include this sitemap on my master page, like the way it's here. Right, and every page I go to, the sitemap is always there. So we want the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our master page. And here in the navigation section, that's where our um, sitemap will go. Now, the sitemap can be displayed several ways. The view I'm using in the example is the tree view. So here under tree view, I'm going to drag that over this and then I'm gonna to go to design and similar to inserting a grid view right we need to tell it where the data source is so in this case we're gonna create a new data source and our navigation is in the sitemap right that's a separate file that's here if you look at the solution explorer so that's where our information is so then leave the default name, hit OK. And now you see that books, movies, at books, at movies now appears. Uh, the only thing is this navigation here, it's a little short, right? The page is kind of going off a little bit. Uh, the width is not long enough. But we can fix that. Just go to the style sheet and under navigation let's change the width to maybe 200 and then save right and then now you see that the navigation is extended a bit so there's a little bit more room now okay so let's see if our sitemap works I'm gonna save the master page I'm gonna close this out um, here I'm gonna close that out as well now I'm going to go to the default page, my home page. I'm going to test this. Okay, so here I'm at the home page. I click here, it takes me to home. I'm going to click on books, and that takes me to the book page. Go to movies, that takes me to the movies page. Here I'm going to click on add books, that should take me to the add form, add movies and I can add movies. Right, but the problem with this is that we don't want just anyone that's visiting our page to be able to access these two forms here, right? Because then they'll change our records uh, and they'll start adding a bunch of things. We're the ones that create this page. We want, the, we want to be the ones that we have control over them. We don't want just anyone coming in and adding stuff. So once we create the logins, the user roles, and the rules, then we'll be able to restrict what users can and cannot do.
Okay, so I'm going to close that out. I'm going to stop debugging. Okay, so <clears throat> the next thing we're going to work on is creating our user logins. So to do that, first thing you need to do, I'm going to go to Solution Explorer here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to add a new item. And I'm going to add a SQL Server database. This is a different one from this one. When we created this, it was an SDF. But now we need to create a regular SQL Server database. So make sure that the file extension is MDF. And go ahead and leave the default name of database. So you should be fine with like that. Then go ahead and hit Add. Um, it's asking the same question again. Hit Yes. All right, so uh, in the that's going to take a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so in the app data folder, now we have two databases. We have the SDF and we have the MDF. The MDF will hold our user login information. And then under Server Explorer, this should be connected, but for some reason it's not. Hmm. Let me check this real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so you want to make sure that your uh, you're connected to the database here has a little uh, connection looking symbol green the X went away uh, to, to ensure that that occurs uh, you can just right click and it's just by right clicking it should connect if not you can always press refresh and that should connect it right or you can also press here to connect it there and there's some other buttons here okay so now that we have a connection to this database then next we need to configure it to allow us to uh, create the logins so let me show you how to do that okay so on blackboard you should have this document here that says website administration tool it's a tutorial for you which I'm gonna go through right now uh, to help you connect to and set up everything for the for the logins, right? Uh, but it's got quite a few steps, so it does involve um, following us documentation, right? So that document is there for you, and I'm not going to read through all of it, but we already started the process. We created the new database MDF. We did that here. We got this pop up. Now we're going to go through the next steps that are required in order to um, set this up for the roles and um, memberships and user logins. Okay, so we need to get to the command prompt first of all. So we can do that here on start, uh, hit run, and then under run we do cmd for command prompt okay now we need to get to the SQL local DB info version 11 actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my desk pin and I'm gonna pin that down so maybe we can follow this while looking at the document at the same time. So I'm going to get this here. I'm going to copy it. And you can do the same thing. And then right click paste. So that's the command. Press enter. All right. So we get some information about our local database. What we need is this instance pipe name. 
we need this URL here. Okay, so to copy the instance pipe name, uh, you can't just select it. Well, you kind of can, but it is a challenge. What you're going to want to do though is right click on the title bar, go to edit, go to mark, and then select what you need. So we need this address here. Then while that's selected, right click again, go to edit, go to copy, and then now with your notepad open, right click paste and that should paste it. That's the easiest way uh, to copy stuff from the command prompt. Right? Uh, so just using the um, the menu here. So now that we have that, let's move on to I'm gonna minimize that. Bring back my um, close that out. Okay, so let's continue through this document here. So we have the pipe name. Now, in the same command prompt, we need this command here. All right, so if you're on 64-bit, then you're going to use Framework 64. If you're on 32-bit, then you're going to use this one instead. Right, but my machine and most of ours now should be 64-bit, so we'll go with this one here. I'm going to right-click, copy. I'm going to go here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to control V. Or okay, so I'm going to right-click. I'm going to paste. And then as soon as I did that, uh, this this wizard popped up here. All right, so then I'm going to hit next. And what database task do you want to perform? We want to make sure that configure SQL server for application services is selected. Then hit next. And then before we enter the information here, Let's go back to Visual Studio. Uh, make sure this is still connected. Refresh if you need to. Though sometimes it disconnects. Okay. So then now for the server address, we need to put our pipe name. So we conveniently save that here in Notepad. So just uh, select it copy it and then paste it here for the server I did control V but you can I think you can just right click paste as well now here in the drop down with this pipe name we should see our Visual Studio folder so it's right here so click that and yeah that's our database.mdf so that's the right one hit next and then here's uh, confirm your settings. Looks good. Hit next. Okay, so now if you read this, you should now configure the provider for membership, profiles, roles, personalizations. Um, now we have access to setting up the logins, right? In the old versions of Visual Studio, you didn't have to enable this wizard, uh, but things have, of course, changed over time and now you have to go through this process. Hit finish. And um, I'm going to minimize this on notepad here. I'm going to put this back where it belongs. Oh, I'm sorry, it goes on the top here. OK. So the next thing we need to do, we're not done with that uh, instructional document. Um, we need to go to Solution Explorer. 
and we need to make a change to our web config. So go ahead and double click web config. Okay, so now we should be here. I'm not sure what that error is about. But we'll go ahead and leave that like that. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we're going to make a little bit of room here uh, between here um, after system.web. Make a little bit of room here. We're going to need to paste some information from our document. So let's go back and take a look at it. All right, so if you, we already did this part here. Now we need these app settings. So we're going to need to insert all this into our um, into our web config. So select it all, right click, copy. Now in this document, because of these uh, returns here, if you see it's highlighted here, 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 um, we're going to need to remove some of those. They might cause some issues. Oh, especially like here in the uh, data source um, section but uh, I'll help you with that but for now let's just get all that text here so paste it in your web config uh, everything looks okay it's just this part here we need to fix these three lines so I'm gonna backspace and then make sure you leave a gap between data source. I'm going to backspace here. Make sure you leave a gap between um, Visual Studio right here. And then here I'm going to hit the backspace as well. And initial catalog also has a space. So make sure you space that out there. All right, so it should look like this you should have a new tag called app settings and then you should have another connection string because this connection string is for the um, database.mdf the connection string that's here this one that's for um, the data.sdf right so two separate databases Okay, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. All right, so here, this URL is just an example URL. It's not the actual URL of your database, right? Because we each have different usernames, right? I'm sure you're not E. Cedillo. Uh, I'm in Enojosa. You have your own student username. If you're doing this at home, then you have a different name altogether right so we need the address the URL of your database.mdf locally so I'll show you how to get that right so for now we can actually just get this here all the way up to the semicolon and just delete it right now we need the actual address of your database so one way of doing that is just click on it from Ex Solution Explorer and then you see here where it says full path name that's the path we need so go ahead and select all that right click copy it and then here where it says attach database file name we deleted the stuff from earlier now go ahead and paste that that address here so for my local machine under the users folder I have a user called student yeah I called my own computer student uh, I have the documents folder and my database is database.mdf right so I got all that address simply just by clicking on it here and I just copied the full path name okay 
Now the next thing we need to modify is this initial catalog. This initial catalog has to be different for everybody's database, right? So what you can do to kind of ensure that each one is unique, uh, I'm going to remove the name here, this ASP.NETDB, or actually we could leave it. Go ahead and leave that there, but change this portion here, change it to your username. Uh, this is in spring, right now we are in, uh, we're in fall, so I'm going to put fall. 2015 and then here's the name of your project so here we called it project setup video and you can do this um, uppercase for each first word so project setup video All right so if you do this then this will ensure that the initial catalog is different for every database right so we all have different usernames. This is a different semester. And if you create other projects uh, with user logins, you would just use the name of that particular project. Right? So that would ensure that each one is different. Integrated security should be true. OK, so I think I believe that's going to be it for the web config for now. So then go ahead and uh, save it. Uh, I highly recommend that you at this point um, go ahead and debug your website because we, um, when you debug it it'll make some changes to the web config uh, we'll need those changes um, set up for us so go ahead and uh, run that okay and we have some sort of error here Okay, so let's see what the problem is. Oh, okay, so the problem is that our connection strings here is already defined. Let's look at our web config real quick. Oh, I see the problem here we have connection strings and then we have another connection strings here okay so our connection strings we can only have them in one place so what we need to do is get all this here I'm gonna cut it out right click cut I'm gonna delete this tag Okay, and then here in the connection string section, I'll make a little bit of room here. I'm going to paste that there. All right, so then now our connection strings are all in one place. Okay, and then we can leave app settings where it's at. So we have connection string, which is to access our data for our site and then we have another one called local SQL server right so there's two of them and they all need to be in one place in the connection settings or uh, connection strings tag so now let's save this I'm gonna stop debugging and then I'm gonna run it again and hopefully we don't get any more errors there you go so that fixed it so the, all the connection strings need to be in one place. So if that happens to you, you just saw how I resolved that problem. right? And that's what this was um, indicated here. OK, so now I'm going to stop debugging. I'm going to close out the web config. And I'll close this out as well. Okay, so now what we're going to do is create our user accounts. So I'm going to go here to website. I'm going to go to ASP.NET configuration. 
and it should take us to a another website where we can configure everything okay so it takes a little bit to load now what we need to do is go to the security tab you can either click here security or here okay now you should see three sections uh, first thing is we need to set up users then roles then access rules so select authentication type and we want our users to authenticate over the web so we're gonna click this from the internet here so put that radio button there once you select that click the done button all the way here at the corner alright so now we have zero users let's create the first one I'm gonna create user and then here um, go ahead and set this as your username so I'm in in Ojosa. my password I'm gonna do one two three four five six seven eight nine exclamation one two three four five six seven eight nine exclamation um, my email give me one second okay for email here um, you can put your real email if you want or you could just use a fake one so fake at gmail.com security question is um, what is your pets name and um, I have a turtle so um, that's a mr. turtle and uh, active user hit create okay so then that's successful hit continue um, you can create more users at this point but I just want one user so I'm gonna click again on the security tab so then now it's registered as one user the next thing we want to do is enable roles right because let's say we have admins we have students we have employees uh, we want to group those together that way when we assign the rules of what can be accessed and what can't be accessed instead of assigning it to individual users we can put all those users in a role and then assign all those privileges to the role or to the group uh, it's easier uh, to manage right because then if you have to set access rules for every single user you have 20 users uh, it can it can be a lot of work okay so then let's go to enable roles then create and manage roles we're only gonna have one role here and that's gonna be admin and then add role okay and then here we add and remove users well we want the username that we created uh, you can either search for it or you can just press N or, or whatever your name is you can press that letter and then you click here user is in role so you click that then hit the back button uh, go back to the security tab and then just to verify you can go to manage users and then you should have a user here edit roles and and in the host says in the admin role so we're we're good to go okay so then now the next thing we need to do is set up access rules All right, so I'm gonna go here to create access rules and you see here your sitemap and the folder that we want to restrict is going to be the admin folder so click admin and for admin we're going to here rule applies to admin so that's the role and we want to allow admins so then once you set that up here 
hit OK. It's going to take you back to this page. Uh, we can go to Manage Access Rules, and this is a different view of the same thing. Right, so it's e a little bit easier to see uh, the the roles. So right now, the admin folder is allowing all admins, and it's also allowing everyone else. Right, we don't want everyone else to have access to our um, to change our records. So I'm going to add a new access rule for anonymous users for users that are not logged in. I want to deny them access to my um, to change records. So go here to anonymous users, deny, hit OK. All right. So now deny anonymous users, and then if we had other roles, I would recommend also add another access rule and all users that are not admins we want to deny them as well so then go to all users hit OK so pretty much what's gonna happen is as soon as somebody clicks on our web page and tries to access this admins folder to make changes to our records it's gonna go down this list here this is very similar to an access control list in um, when you're doing networking if you've done that in the past then this might uh, make a little bit more sense to you right so we're gonna allow an admin anyone whose admin is allowed per, is given permission to access the admin folder so if the user is not an admin then it's gonna go to the next rule if the user is not logged in at all then they'll be denied access from the admin folder all right if they're not anonymous and they're logged in then they'll also be denied and then here at the bottom allow all this is you can ex you can you can consider this as an explicit or implicit allow that's at the bottom of every single access rule and the thing is if you notice here it cannot be deleted right because by default everybody's allowed to access your pages right but since it's at the bottom this expression or this rule will never be evaluated right because on right above it is deny all so as soon as somebody that meets this criteria of all maybe we click here we might see some information no right so anyone that is all that's not admin is going to be denied anyway so this access rule will never occur also anybody that's not logged in will also be denied okay so that's pretty much it for setting up roles. Let's um, we can leave that open. Now what we can do is we can test our access rules. Let's go to the default page. It's right here. I'm going to run that in Chrome. Okay. So books, we can still access it even though we're anonymous. Movies, we can access because uh, we're anonymous right now. We're not logged in. But as soon as I go to add books, okay, so we got an error of some sort. So we need to fix that also. But you can see it stopped us from uh, actually logging in or accessing that page. Same thing will happen with books. right? But what's supposed to happen is we're supposed to get to the login page so we can actually put in our credentials um, but we haven't set it up yet but it's almost working so that's good let's continue I'm gonna stop debugging I'm gonna go to the web config so double click uh, everything seems okay here okay well we'll set that up soon let's see what the issue is hmm okay 
So what I had to do is if I refresh, then we have a web config here for the admin folder. You see, and then here's our access rules. So everything seems to be working okay. Uh, now we just need to set up the login, and then from there um, we'll be able to fix that problem we just uh, occurred that just occurred right now. So I'll close that out. Close that out as well. Let's uh, go to the security page. Let's create a login. So I'm gonna double click here. Now under content ID, content two. I'm gonna press enter here. And what I want to do, and remember we're in the login page in the security folder. We're gonna want a login control. So you go to login here in the tool box. Go ahead and place that there. Go to design, and then now you'll see our login control. Go ahead and save this. Let's uh, open up the web config for the entire site. Not the admin config, so let me minimize that. So this web config here. Okay, so so we'll need that open. Let's um, on Chrome go ahead and and run the uh, debugger. Okay, so our login is here and we should be able to log in uh, but not yet let's let's go ahead and close that out stop debugging I'm gonna double click on the web config hmm I'm looking for a particular setting that I can't find Okay, so I think what we'll do is let's go ahead and file, save all. I'm going to close my project and then I'm going to reopen it. I'm going to go ahead and close that out and then reopen it. Okay, so I guess turning it off and on didn't, uh, or reloading the project didn't fix it either. So what we're gonna have to do is we we'll have to go to the authentication mode under forms. Right now the URL for our login is a little off because of the fact that we have it in a different folder. Right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand this authentication mode here. it's a self-closing tag we don't want that we want it to be a normal tag right so now with authentication mode under forms mode forms now we can actually add something else here so we can do uh, forms or form maybe So forms, then we want a uh, login URL, URL equals, and then we want it to direct it to where our login's form is located. So in this case, we'll do um, double dot forward slash security forward slash login dot ASPX okay now if we reload the default page uh, save your web config so here's our home page go and hit run
Hmm. Unrecognized attribute. Um, I may have typed the login attribute wrong. Give me one second. Okay, so the problem might be that it's lowercase, or it's supposed to be lowercase. So let's go back and fix that. Go to your web config here. Change that to lowercase l. Okay. Save it. Now let's try again. I'm going to stop debugging. I'm going to run again. Okay, well, um, okay, so I think I know what the problem is. Uh, I'm gonna, let's go back here. Maybe we have too many dots. Alright, so maybe one dot. There you go. Now, hopefully, that will fix it. Okay, there you go. Now, if I click Add Books, now it takes me to the correct page. Now I can log in. So I'm going to use my account, make sure my roles are working. So then this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, exclamation, log in. Okay. And then now I can add a book title. So another book could be The Godfather, another book, and a movie, insert. Now we go to books, The Godfather is there. Okay, so now that we fix that, uh, another change I would like to make is this books and this movies here, um, I don't want users that don't have an account I don't want them viewing my information I want to at least make sure that they create an account before um, they can look at the contents of my website so we'll make some changes to um, to the books and movies folder the access rules for that so I'm gonna close us all out I'm gonna stop debugging and then I'm going to go back to the ASP.NET configuration site. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to security. I'm going to go to create or maybe manage access rules. I'm going to click on books. right? And right now everybody's allowed. So I need to make sure that anonymous users are denied. Hit OK. So if anybody that's anonymous is denied and then once somebody logs in they're allowed to uh, view the contents of the page. We'll do the same thing for movies. Add a new access rule. Anonymous users, I want them denied. Hit OK. Oh, for some reason I put that twice. So I'm going to delete that hit yes okay and then everybody's allowed to the security folder right because everybody needs to be allowed so they can eventually log in all right so that should be pretty good we can close that out uh, we can test again from the default page go to books see I'm law it's not letting me access this because I'm not logged in right but the minute I log in I should be able to view it now yeah there you go it works can I insert a record yes okay so everything's working close it out and then stop debugging Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll create, um, we'll work on the create account page, so double click there, and then we'll make the form for new users, 
So if you go under login, there should be a create user wizard. You just click there and just drag it in and it sets it up automatically for you. Go to design and then you see to create new accounts that's already there set up. Super easy. Uh, the thing we're going to want though is if we go to login and they don't have an account then they need to be allowed to create one. So I think if we click here on login if we go to properties here there is create user text and create user URL. So here we could write something like create an account and then under create user URL click here and then we want the security page we want the create account page and then make sure you get rid of the squiggly line and I think one dot should be okay and then you can uh, press enter there I'll put the properties back where they belong now let's test that out and then if we create if we click create an account we should be able to create somebody so hit create and no oh I think the reason is we're not supposed to put the dot so let me go back close this out stop so here go ahead and I think we can just um, we can delete the folder there actually it's gonna be dot forward slash like that okay so we'll try that and then create account there you go that works fine <clears throat> because we're in the same directory so that's what the dot means so let's close that out so let's get stop there okay so then the next thing I want to do is insert a login view and show you how that works so we'll, we're gonna put the login view in the master page so double click master and then in the footer section we'll go ahead and put a login view so just drag it from the toolbox put it there go back to design and with login view you have two I guess two states or two views you have anonymous template which is what a user sees as not logged in and then you have a logged in template so a user that's not that is logged in they're gonna see something different right and the login view will switch out based on rather the logged in or not so let's set up the anonymous template first so here we could do and you can just type in here in the uh, login view we could type something like um, okay please log in to the site and then a colon and then maybe some space and then we're gonna put in a login button or in this case it's called a login status so I'm gonna throw that there right so the login status is when it's logged in it, it wants you to click on it so you, or when you're logged out it wants you to click on it to log in and when you're logged in it gives you the option to log out Right, it's kind of hard to see because it's blue. Um, maybe we can fix that. Uh, 
yeah, we'll need to set some CSS in order to uh, fix the fact that it's blue. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe for now, what I can do just to do this quickly, um, I'm going to change this to maybe gray, the footer. Go back to master. So I made that gray, so it's a little easier to see. It doesn't look too great to me though. But then the text now is hard to see. Hmm. I don't like it. Go back to style sheet. Uh, we can actually just choose a different color. Maybe uh, dark gray would be okay. Now save that. You see, so it's a little easier to see now. At least for now, temporary. Okay, so that's how it's going to look. The login view, that's how it's going to look when somebody's logged in or logged out. Oh, sorry. This I need to switch to logged out. There you go. So that's how it's going to look. Now we're going to go to the logged in template, and that one's going to be a little different. That one's going to welcome the user. So welcome, and then you put the login name. And whatever name, who, if it's N in a Hosa or a student, that person will show up here. So it's like a personalized greeting, I guess. You could think of it that way. And then we need to make a little bit of space and then give them the option to log out when they're done. Right, and then you can modify this login control in the source code. It's probably a little easier. Right, and then you can see the two templates. This is the anonymous template that's asking them to please log in, and then a login status. And then the, the what happened here was our login status, instead of it being in the login view, it came out. So let me fix that. It's kind of hard to do certain things in the um, in the design mode. Design mode's not the greatest in the world. Right, so in logged in we're supposed to have the login name to welcome them. Here I'm gonna put a maybe a break instead. I'll put a break there. I'm gonna delete this extra space a little bit easier to do within the code itself. Sometimes trying to do things through a WYSIWYG editor can be a challenge. Right, so now we save that. Let's look at it in design mode. You see, so now the login is here on the bottom. It's a little bit easier to deal with, right? But you can arrange it however you like. I'm just showing you different options. Okay, so let's run that. So then right now you see that we're in the anonymous template view. So they can a user can log in. So then that's N in a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, exclamation, log in. Right, and then now it says welcome N Hosa. And then now I can log out. Right, so then I'm an anonymous user again. Let's create an account. This is going to be for student. Password is one two three four five six seven eight nine. Same password one two three four five six seven eight nine. Exclamation. Uh, I'm just going to put whatever for the email. Oh, I don't know what happened there. I pressed something accidentally. Okay, so let's try this again. S student. Password is one two three four five six seven eight nine exclamation one two three one two three four five six seven eight nine exclamation xxx at uh, gmail dot com security question I'm just gonna put anything in here and then create user 
never continue so then now the the uh, student is logged in I'm gonna log out real quick go back to I guess home we can log in here we can use our student account now one two three four five six seven eight nine exclamation right and then now I logged in I can view the books I can view the movies but can I insert a record no I can't insert a record right so then it's asking me to log in all right so then let's say I try to log in as a student one two three four five six seven eight nine exclamation let's see what happens right it doesn't accept it because we're already logged in but only an admin as you can see here is allowed or it's the admin folder where this is trying to take us um, but the access rule is preventing us from inserting a record and that's what you want so then you can log out and we can close it up and stop debugging okay so the next or the last thing we need to do is prepare our website to be able to upload it to our web server now here what I have is I have all seven web pages open right I have ad books ad movies uh, the default for books the default for movies the security pages open and our home page I have all those open what we need to do is we need to edit here we need to edit the master the the master page and remove the tilde and put a dot to replace it so this is our home page so this is only going to require one dot okay now for login because login is inside another folder folder called security then we're going to need two dots and then remove the tilt alright so then if you just put one dot this is what's going to happen you get a little green um, you get a green squiggly line and then the error says file master page dot master not found right but the minute you put the next dot here it goes back two places two folders so it comes out so let's say here this is the login right so if you put just one dot then it's trying to look for a master page within the security folder and there is no master page there so then you need another dot so that way to look in the in the root directory and then it does find the master page same thing for create account double dots uh, this is the default for movies so here this is inside another folder so then we put two dots as well uh, same thing for the default for books two dots add, mo add movies two dots and then um, this is the add books so two dots as well all right, so the only one that had one dot was the master page or the the home page, the reference to the master page here, because it's all it's in the same directory or in the same location, the master page as the home page, right? All right, because this default and the master page are both in the same place, so only one dot. So you can do file, save all, after you change all that. Uh, you can test it. It should still function. Yeah, so everything's working OK. Yeah, so we're still good. OK, so now the next thing is we need to make some changes in the web config and then we should be ready to upload our site uh, to our web server
Okay, so let's move on to let's stop debugging. Let's go to the web config here. And I'm going to minimize this and this. Okay. Uh, first of all, this connection string, what I'm going to go ahead and do for the first one, for our data, I'm going to select this, and I'm going to comment it out, or try to. There you go. So I'm going to comment that out. And then I'm going to copy it. and then paste it. Right, because the thing is we need to change I'm going to remove the comments. We need to change this data directory, right, because this only applies to our website locally, right? The minute we put it on a server the data source, the location of the data source will change. So this is for our data here. So let me show you what to put in the data source so that way it um, once you upload it, it'll be in the right location. Okay, so for data source here, I'm going to delete what's here. And then I'm going to paste the, um, the directory that we need uh, to access our database on the web server. So it starts with C colon for the C drive, uh, FTP folder, and in my case I'm in the instructors folder, but yours would be student, students, uh, your username, and then if you have any sort of logins on your project, and in this case we do, uh, you need to use one of the special auth folders, right? Uh, you should have seven of them, or several. Uh, I think in, in our case we have seven of them in our um, directory on the um, on the f uh, FTP server or the file server web server in this case I've already used auth 1 and I've used auth 2 so now for this example I'm gonna put it in auth 3 but in your case if you haven't uploaded a project yet with user logins then you could probably use folder one right so depending on your situation uh, you would choose a folder that you need notice that this folder is replacing the project vid setup video folder that we had before right so it needs to be named this way Right, so what we'll do is when we upload it, we'll just upload the contents inside project setup video. We'll upload them to one of the uh, auth folders. And then of course the app data is the same. We ha everybody should have an app data folder in their um, in their project. And then data.sdf. That's the name of our uh, compact database. Okay, so now that's good to go for the um, for the to upload the data but we still need to make changes because this C colon right here this stuff doesn't apply to the web server it only applies to your machine locally and the reason I comment them out rather than deleting them is that if you need to make a change locally on your site then you want to uncomment um, this portion and, and fix the connection strings, having them both available uh, so that we can continue working on it locally before you upload. So here we want to remove, this is fine, here the add name, this portion here we're going to want to comment that out. So I'll, sh I'll zoom out so you can see what it looks like. Right, so we comment that all out for now. And then we're going to add a different local SQL server. 
and then that local SQL server you can get that information and what you need to upload uh, from that um, instructional document. Let me bring that up real quick. Okay, yeah, uh, we're actually gonna have to go a little lower. Sorry about that. Okay, so here on page uh, page nine of the instructional document, we're gonna need to copy the connection string or the add name here. We need to copy this information and uh, use this in the web config. So just uh, either Control C or right click copy and then go ahead and add um, or paste and then let's go ahead and uh, remove Let me do something like this I'm there you go all right, so yours should look something like this. I kind of put it all in one line. It's a little bit easier to manage. So I'll zoom in. So here we have add local SQL server. And, but this is, this is for our local database. Here we have a different one for the web server, but it has the same name, same provider name there. And then the connection string is going to be a little different. So here it'll say data source, um, and then that the IP address um, 127.0.0.1. This user ID and password, we'll leave that the same. The initial catalog here. Uh, let's go ahead and delete the one that's there. And let's use the one we created earlier. Which is right above here. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste that here. All right, so that's the initial catalog we'll use. Integrated security faults, and then here the attached database name. Here, you need to put instead of Isedio, you need to put your username. The folder, the authentication folder you're using. So in my case, I'm using three. You might be using one. Uh, we'll leave that the same because that's the name of our database. It was uh, the MDF database. It's database.mdf. And yours should be in students. My site is in instructors. Instructors. So then I think that's going to be it for the settings. All right, so it looks a little different from the local one that we had here before. But if some, for some reason you need to come back and do some changes locally, you can always comment this out and then uncomment the top one and then continue to work on it locally. But once you're ready to um, put this on the server, then yeah, you definitely want this uncommented. Okay, so go ahead and save that, and I think that's pretty much it. Now let's upload it to the server, see if it works. Okay, so I'm here in FileZilla. Uh, I'm going to go to, I'm here in my folder, but I'm going to go to Auth3, and it's empty, so I can put a new project in here. And then for the video I created another project setup 
so make sure that that's what's showing up here and seeing I worked on it today at 1115 right so this is the correct folder so all the contents from project setup video right if I go back here go to project setup so I'm in that folder what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the first one hold down the shift key select everything that's here and I'm gonna drop it into my auth3 folder right in your case you may be dropping it in the auth auth1 folder and then you can see the progress here so as soon as it uploads then um, we'll go ahead and test it out okay so it's done I'm gonna go to uh, Google Chrome here I'm going to go to my web page, but this time I'm going to go to the auth3 folder, press enter, and hopefully we made no errors, and we did. Um, it should come up. Okay, so if we want to see what the problem is, right now it's not displaying it because it's not allowing us to see um, our errors so this custom errors tag here I'm gonna select it I'm gonna copy it so I'm gonna go to here FileZilla I'm gonna go to my web config I'm gonna right click I'm gonna view and edit uh, if you get that message just discard so I closed out Visual Studio so that way I wouldn't have any other files showing up right so we have this thing called web2 config that's coming from directly from the web server then I'm going to paste this custom errors here uh, uh, under system.web so I put it right above the role manager I'm going to save it. I'm going to close out Visual Studio. And then you should get this pop up because we made a change uh, on the web server. Do I want to upload it? And just hit yes. OK. So now that that change has been made, now hopefully we can see what the problem is, right? Because right now we can't see it. So just go ahead and uh, reload. OK, so now it's going to tell us something else. Okay, so according to the error we received, this, the target framework attribute in the compilations element of the web config file is used only to target version 4.0. Okay, so the target framework currently references a version that is later than the installed version of the .NET framework. Okay, so what we're going to do close that out um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change this to 4.5 and here I'm gonna change this to 4.5 so that should be the target one so save I'm gonna close that out now see if that will fix our problem following its, the directions here. So now let me reload. Okay, and so that's what it was. Because uh, we were trying to do it for 4.6, uh, that's what I have installed on this machine, but it's supposed to be, the target framework supposed to be 4.5. Okay, so then now it, it seems to be functioning. Okay, and make sure we can log in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then log in. Okay, so then here we are. And we can add records and we can log out. So everything seems to be working fine. So it was just that one change that we need to make in the um, web config. So, um,
again so we can take a look at it right click on that view edit hit OK take a look yeah so here on the under the compilation setting just make sure that it's under 4.5 and then that should hopefully um, everything else should work okay okay so I guess that should be it uh, thank you for watching this very long video uh, I hope it helps you out if you have any questions of course uh, you may email me uh, anytime thanks